So this is my final project for transgender studies, Neo Hulu X and the Transgender Gaze. Neo Hulu X is a Chinese-born transgender drag artist currently living in the U.S. She was a competitor and ultimately the winner of the fifth season of the Boulay Brothers Dragula, a drag competition show that takes the basic shape of RuPaul's Drag Race, but showcases alternative and horror drag. Dragula has been praised for not only featuring the alternative horror side of drag, but also for featuring a more diverse array of drag artists than Drag Race. Dragula has regularly featured transgender queens, drag kings, for example, drag king Landon Sider is a show winner, and also cis women drag artists. In a paper magazine article, Neo Hulu talked about growing up in China and not even having a notion that being transgender existed. They came to the U.S. during the pandemic to attend Parsons School of Design and study fashion, and it was in the U.S. that they discovered drag and came out as a transgender woman. Her drag is inspired by Chinese folklore, particularly the darker parts of it, and as the paper article describes her drag, the through line is always transforming darkness and negativity into something beautiful and empowering. That attraction to the darkness comes from the darkness of her own life. In a dazed digital interview, before she came out as a trans woman, Nia Hulu said, I realized I was gay when I was very young and I lived in the closet for many years because being gay was considered a mental illness and a great sin. Pretending to be someone else was so painful and depressing and there was nobody to talk to about it, so I felt so sad and alone all the time. So at the heart of her drag is both an appreciation for the beauty of the darkness, for the monstrous, but also a belief in transformation. Not just of the darkness into beauty, but of the thing of darkness into a thing of beauty. What I want to explore in this presentation is the drag package Neo Hulu X presented on the fifth season of Dragula, and how it stands as an embodiment of the transgender gaze, as explored by Jack Halberstam in In a Queer Time and Place, Transgender Bodies, Subcultural Lives. In the book, Halberstam devotes a chapter to a discussion of the transgender gaze, a sort of answer to Laura Mulvey's concept of the male gaze. Mulvey's concept describes the way film often depicts women through a male lens from a male perspective and as sexual objects being created for heterosexual male pleasure. Halberstam argues that transgender characters are often depicted through essentially a cisgender lens that objectifies, monstrifies, or invisibilizes the transgender person, while a transgender gaze, one that depicts and figures transgender people through a transgender perspective, sees transness and the transfigure more authentically and truthfully. So let's look at some drag and talk more about the transgender gaze. Halberstam gives us an important perspective on how the transgender gaze is produced. Here's a quote from the book. Both the crying game and boys don't cry rely on the successful solicitation of affect, whether it be revulsion, sympathy, or empathy, in order to give mainstream viewers access to a transgender gaze. The cisgender world is taught to either not perceive trans people at all, or to perceive them as figures detached from humanity, figures not like us, figures we can't and don't have to relate our humanity to. So affect becomes essential, even if that affect is horror or revulsion, because it carves a doorway out of that impenetrable wall so that we can see trans people, connect to trans people, and relate to trans people's humanity. For the second episode of the season, the contestants were challenged to create a gross outlook based on the Garbage Pail Kids, although for the episode they had to call them trash can children for copyright reasons. And Neo Hulu created a spider mother look. While it didn't exactly hit the vibe of Garbage Pail Kids, the look was really stunning. She created a crown and a mask to give the illusion of a face full of spider eyes. She's draped in spidery silk, a big spider sits on her chest, and her pregnant belly is tattooed with a spider. Her mouth and belly button are, instead of their human expectation, jewel-encrusted vaginas, and from the vagina on her pregnant belly, she produced a spider baby attached to a web-covered umbilical cord. 
This look embodies this feature of the transgender gaze that Halberstam puts forth. In this look, she uses revulsion and horror to create that space through which the viewer can enter the transgender space she's inhabiting. The visual shocks us. It repels us. But in that feeling, we can, in a way, share what it feels like for her to be the object of the cisgender world's revulsion. Through witnessing her, we're embodying what's projected onto her by the world. We think she looks like a monster, and that lets us into what she might experience being told she is, as a trans woman, monstrous. This is a crucial piece in understanding why Nia Hulu's drag operates under the transgender gaze. She uses affect, particularly revulsion, as that access point. The body horror of this look draws back a curtain for us to see as a transgender woman being hated by the world. And we step into that experience instead of being removed from it. Another feature of the transgender gaze that Halberstam notes is that the transgender gaze is a way to let us into the fantasy of the potentiality of the body to morph, shift, change, and become fluid. When we are looking with the transgender gaze, the fluidity of the body in time and in space is foregrounded, and it's seen not as horror, not as threat, but as potential, as opportunity, as power. In the season's first runway challenge, Terror in the Woods, Neo Hulu created a fabulous woodland creature with a fox face and an assortment of interchangeable human faces on fans and parasols. The look, which nods to historical images of wealth and power, also plays with the notion of trans potentiality. She has multiple faces to choose from, multiple forms she can inhabit, and they are presented as decorative. These aren't alternative shapes to be ashamed of. They're alternative shapes to celebrate, to flaunt, to be ostentatious with. And the look's subtle nod to the way cisgender society often sees trans people as deceivers shows up in the face she wears as her true face, the face of a fox. This is the transgender gaze, playing with fluidity, playing with transformation, playing with potentiality, but doing so through the lens of power, of pride, of bravura. Another feature of the transgender gaze is housing depictions that aren't obsessed with passing and locating the particular powers not passing contains. So I want to say a little bit about passing. Passing is often considered to be by cis people a goal, an achievement, or an aspirational practice. And while I get that trans folks and queer folks in general have complicated relationships to passing as both a pressure and a protective means, in this context, I just want to focus on passing as a practice that renders transness invisible. And when the transfigure is no longer passing, the power that comes with that revelation. So here's Halberstam on passing and the transgender gaze. He, she is both failing to pass and threatening to expose a rupture between the distinct temporal registers of past, present, and future. So basically, visible transness, recognizable transness, is seen through a cisgender gaze as a failure. The trans person that doesn't pass isn't doing it right. But in the transgender gaze, passing doesn't matter. By not passing, the trans figure assumes the power to reveal failures in the world around them. Failures in the structures and temporalities of the world that otherwise marginalize trans people. The non-passing trans body is a disruption in the same way that revolutions upset dictatorships. For the Pleasure Planet X runway, a cyberpunk sex worker themed runway, Neo Hulu created this wild sex robot fantasy with not only wildly large breasts in the usual places, but also a circle of breasts around her hips to serve as almost a breast tutu allowing her sex worker creation to entertain many Johns from many angles at once. We can see Halberstam's ideas around non-passing and the transgender gaze at work here. This trans body is exaggerating the locations of transition in multiple ways. 
uh, exaggeration, extra parts where there shouldn't be parts, so that it moves beyond passing into being an almost overly visible trans body. And in that exaggeration and the body's transness, that refusal to be rendered invisible by passing, we are led into a space where the artist can examine the ways trans bodies are sexualized and commodified. Not only is this trans body covered in explicit expressions of transition, but it's also covered in explicit expressions of transaction. Dollar bills serving as nipple covers and as hair adornments. For this creation, Nia Hulu is connecting the empowerment of transition to an economic empowerment. The trans body that performs sexual desirability the best is the trans body that will be prized the best. But we can also see this as an expression of the way that trans women have often resorted to sex work because they have been locked out of other pathways due to transphobia. They are reduced to their sexual desirability and in that lose some of their humanity. The transgender gaze holds all these multiple complexities instead of flattening the trans body into a single story of tragedy or trauma. Finally, Halberstam talks about the transgender gaze as a means to talk about more than just transness. The transgender gaze, Halberstam suggests, can be used to explore other modes of fluidity and change. Gender metamorphosis in these films is also used as a metaphor for other kinds of mobility. In her final runway package, Neo Hulu X created a look that embodies all of these ideas about the transgender gaze and incorporates ideas about her experience as a Chinese immigrant to America. The look features an American Chinese takeout box with the words enjoy Chinese meat written on it. And Neo Hulu transforms herself into the meal inside a figure dressed in a traditional Chinese outfit with a pig snout and facial features covered in noodles and sauce and other food pieces with a real pig's foot fashioned as her phallus. Everything's at play here. Revulsion is our affect that's allowing us entry into the transgender gaze. We are looking at a depiction of the fluid trans body transformed into an animal. We are witnessing the power of the non-passing trans body. Transness is entirely visible here. And it's a tool to reveal the working failures of the world it inhabits. And we see this trans body's complicated relationship with being a Chinese body in an American context. The way her body is fetishized and reduced to Chinese meat. The assumptions of Orientalism that make Chinese women subservient sexual property, nothing more than a meal. We see the fetishization and dehumanization of trans women's bodies into little more than meat the reduction of the immigrant and their culture into an American stereotype, her body being packaged in an American takeout box. This look holds so many ideas at once, ideas about femininity, transness, Americanness, Orientalism, immigrant experience, sex, humanness, and they are all seen in their complexities, in their wholeness without reduction. This is the transgender gaze. So here's just a final quote from uh, Halberstam's book um, that sort of sums up the transgender gaze. The spectacle of the transgender body confirms a fantasy of fluidity so common to notions of transformation within the postmodern. To others, the transgender body confirms the enduring power of the binary gender system, but to still others, the transgender body represents a utopian vision of a world of subcultural possibilities, part of the production of new forms of heroism, vulnerability, visibility, and embodiment.